In this tutorial, I will show you how to set different meters and measures in FamiTracker. My name is Matthew Ivick, and if you love writing rhythmic music like me, you know how important meter is. Meter is the backbone of our composition. It defines the when and where our notes are to be placed. Especially in today's musical world, the ability to dynamically shift our meter and our composition is essential. I've broken this tutorial up into four parts. First, I'll explain row highlights and how they help define meter in our pattern window. Second, I'll explain how to change simple meters or meters where the beat is evenly divided. In the third section, I'll talk about compound meters or time signatures where the beat is divided into three parts. And lastly, for all my prog rock and experimental music friends, I'll discuss writing music that uses mixed meters and include a short musical example at the end. If you find this tutorial to be a little too overwhelming or some of these concepts aren't making a lot of sense, I suggest you check out my introductory video on FamiTracker, which I'll link here. Row highlights, located in the upper right corner, are used to alter the yellow highlights found in the pattern window. By default, the first highlight, or the weak highlight, occurs every four rows, and the second highlight, or the strong highlight, occurs every 16 rows. The first highlight marks beats 2, 3, and 4, and the second highlight, marks the downbeat 1. Rows without highlights represent 16th note subdivisions. This pattern of strong and weak highlights is repeated four times per frame. We can identify the strong weak pattern as a measure of common time. Notice how this is made possible by the amount of rows defined in the song settings. There are 64 rows and this number is divisible by the amount of rows it takes to form a measure, which is 16. 64 divided by 16 is 4. That's how we get the four measures displayed per frame. Making sure the quotient is even ensures ensures that complete measures are displayed. While I said highlights represent beats in a measure, this doesn't necessarily have to be the case. For example, we could choose to say that the strong yellow highlight represents every other beat in the measure, so beats 1 and 3. This means weak yellow highlights could represent 8th notes, and individual rows could represent 32nd notes. Keep in mind that the song's speed determines the module's BPM, so if we'd still want the default tempo of 150, we would have to have the speed to compensate. In other words, we're doubling the perceived value of the row highlights, so we need to cut in half the ticks per row. To do this, change speed 6 to speed 3. We can also program in the F03 command in any instrument's effect column. I like to use the DPCM channel for changes that affect the entire module. The DPCM channel is usually empty, so this is an easy place to program information at. If we hit play, you'll notice how the playback is exactly the same, except we have more rows to work with. This is especially useful when we want to add embellishments, like trills or other notes smaller than 16th notes, so be sure to keep it in mind. Now that we know how row highlights function, we can discuss changing meter. Specifically, what if we wanted to display a simple time signature other than 4-4? Changing to time signatures where the quarter note receives the beat, such as 5-4, 3-4, or 2-4 is easy. All we need to do is add or subtract multiples of 4 from our second highlight. This is because every 4 rows equals 1 beat. For example, if we wanted to change to 3-4 time, we would subtract 1 beat's worth of row highlights from the second highlight box. So 16 minus 4 is 12. Now the pattern window is displaying 3-4 time. Alternatively, if we wanted to add an additional beat to display 5-4 time, we would add 4 rows to the second row highlight. So this time it's 16 plus 4, which is going to equal 20. Another way of thinking about this is to simply multiply the amount of beats, or the top number of your time signature by 4, and set the second row highlight accordingly. If you wish to display 16th notes as your smallest subdivision, keep the first row highlight as 4. Let's go back to our 3-4 example for a moment. We have an issue within our pattern window. Instead of displaying 4 measures, we now have 5 and 1 beats worth of measures. This is because our total number of rows per frame, 64, is not divisible by the amount of rows it takes to form a measure in 3-4 time. It now takes 12 rows to form a measure. If we wanted to display 4 measures per frame, we would multiply 12 by 4 and set the song settings total rows to this number, which is 48. Ultimately, it's up to you as to how many measures you wish to show per frame. So think about your composition and think about what you're comfortable with and set it to that. So far we have covered simple time, or meters which divide the beat into two parts. It's also possible to change highlights to represent compound time signatures, which divide the beat into three equal parts. Let's try changing meter to the compound time of 6-8, 
by setting row highlight 1 to 6 and row highlight 2 to 12. The strong highlight still marks beat 1, but now occurs every 12 rows. The weak highlight is shown every 6 rows, marking the second compound beat of each 6-8 measure. Keep in mind, each row still represents a 16th note. There are other ways to represent 6-8 time, but this method follows the same logic as our simple meter example. The strong highlight represents the downbeat, while the weak highlight represents where each beat falls, in this case, the dotted quarter note. If we want to figure out highlights for other compound signatures, first set the first row highlight to 6, second multiply the top number of the time signature you wish to change to by 2. For example, for 9-8 time, we would multiply 9 by 2, which is 18, and set the second row highlight to 18. For 12-8 time, we would multiply 12 by 2, which is 24, and so on. Notice how, again, we run into the same problem we had with 3-4 time. Instead of displaying 4 measures of 6-8, we see 5 complete measures and 1 downbeat. The solution is the same as before. Figure out how many rows it takes to complete a single measure of 6-8 time, and multiply that by the number of measures you'd like to see per frame. It takes 12 rows to display one measure of 6-8 time, so if we'd like to display four measures of 6-8 time per frame, we'd need 48 rows. Simple and compound meters will suffice for most people, but if you made it this far, you might want something more. You might want something uncommon, different, special. Well, you're in luck. I've got just what you need, and that's mixed meters. Pieces said to use mixed meters, when it changes between various time signatures. This change usually happens fairly frequently or within a specific section of music. Take, for instance, a piece which changes from 6-8 to 2-4, then to 5-8, and then to 3-4, and so on. This music would, in theory, make use of four different time signatures. To notate this in FamiTracker would be a bit tricky, but is still perfectly possible. Since we can only show two highlights at a time, and our meters divide the beat into two and three parts respectively, highlights aren't that practical. However, we do have other resources to mark our time changes. One strategy is to mark beats using the DPCM channel. Without an assigned sample, the DPCM channel does not play back any sounds. Therefore, it's the perfect tool to give us a visual cue as to where we are in our pattern. Additionally, if one of our time signatures shares a common subdivision, like an eighth note, we can set our highlights to this particular subdivision. In this way, we can both see where our beat patterns shift and any subdivisions which they may share in common. Like with our other examples, it's a good idea to know how many rows our mixed meter music will take place over. In the example of 6 8, 2 4, 5 8, 3 4, we would figure out how many rows it takes to complete a measure of each time signature, add them, and then change the row settings to this number. In this case, it would take 12 rows to complete a bar of 6 8, 8 rows to complete a bar of 2 4, 10 rows to complete a bar of 5 8, and 12 rows to complete a bar of 3 4. In total, that's 42 rows. A simpler solution would be to simply truncate the measures using the DXX effect. This effect skips to the next frame and positions the playback bar to a specific row, which is the XX part of the effect. I usually prefer this method because it's not intuitive to calculate numbers ahead of time, so if you're uncertain of the exact measure count, use the DXX effect. Just keep in mind that you'll have to use this effect for each frame. Also, if you need help in putting a particular mix time signature, feel free to leave a comment as well. I'll do my best to help you out. So finally, here's a short piece of music that uses mixed meter and some of the techniques I've discussed. Included are annotations for the different meters used. If you found these to be useful, please consider leaving a thumbs up or down. This is the tip of the iceberg when it comes to meter and fami tracker. I'll be putting out more videos about meter and rhythm, so feel free to subscribe to get notified about them. In the meantime, if you're interested in more rhythmic techniques for fami tracker, I also have a video on tuplets. And if you just can't wait, I have an entire book on fami tracker, which I'll link in the description.
Catch you next time and thanks.